ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واياكم ومحدثات الامور فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل وكل بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون my beloved brothers and my beloved sisters all praise due to allah the most magnificent to be of forgiving who has alhamdulillah given us the best of this dunya materialistic world so that we can through this attain the best of here after jannati laala jannati firdaus brothers and sisters khutba especially especially on fridays and the rest of, rest of the lecture is meant to be something of an educational episode <coughs> keeping that in mind we see that khutbatul jumu'ah is where, which is the most important because it is it is wajib to hear and wajib to be delivered <coughs> without that there is no salatul jumu'ah it is something which has been given as a compensation for two units of the salah normally <coughs> salatul zuhur enough it is to know the importance of that so if we say in khutbatul jumu'ah in chinese language when everybody is a russian is not acceptable or if i speak in russian when nobody knows including the speaker what he is speaking about what is the point of that lecture it has to be in the language which is received by those who come put so much of effort come out for it <coughs> take leave from for, from work so that they can make it for this salatul jumu'ah as much as the imam the khatib may be preparing for it so it is those brothers who have to put that extra mile so that to make it to this juma it does not go unnoticed maybe by me and you it does but not by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is such an important thing that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam used this khutbah as a platform to uh, to cure or to mention and teach whatever the societies they needed including so many of the times ma balu aqwamin kadha wa kadha ma balu fula aqwamin kadha wa kadha what has happened is these people they have intended to do this these people they have i have heard or balagani and and kadha wa kadha that i have been told about these things happening and so forth <coughs> then he would sallallahu alaihi wasallam speak about the qadiya the issue and give the notice at the same time to what what is wrong he would not mention a name unless it is something for good at times we receive the names also but it would normally be through the ru'at those who are the sahabas who had the hadith from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they knew of the incident possibly to another hadith you may find out that this was the particular sahabi or this were the particular qaum this is when it is things which are hidden but at times there are things which becomes prevalent that known it came from fulan and from fulan and from fulan then it is at times only suitable to mention it by names for the purpose of clarification Now we know that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said unsur akhaka zaliman aw mazluma fa qalu ya rasulullah nansuruhu mazluman kayfa nansuruhu zaliman qala tahjuruhu aw tamna'uhu aw hajruhu aw man'uhu min nasrihi hadith sahih that you help your brother you help your brother unsur akhak or help your brother zaliman aw mazluma while he is being oppressed or he is the oppressor himself so the sahabas they didn't understand the meaning of if you help a person who is in need of your help being oppressed we do understand ya rasul but what about a zalim the one who is oppressing or doing the wrong what to do about them qala man'uhu aw hajruhu 
hajruhu aw man'uhu min nasrihi that you either limit uh, uh, limited uh, limit him or put him to prison or whatever constrain him or stop him and that is from his nasr that is from supporting him also when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said la tu'inu shaytana ala akhikum do not help your brother uh, shaytan over your brother it comes in many forms including when there are things which people they start to talk about they would say fulan did this fulan did that and if you are in the power to stop it it becomes wajib fardu ain on you to do it otherwise you are sinful for that and if you are not in position to put a stop to that at least is you can give nasiha if that is what you are able to do so there are so many other hadith surrounding this issue which i wanted to start with possibly <coughs> this much is enough now everybody is thinking what i'm really going to talk about i'm going to talk about something which is a favorite thing which has just happened four days ago and that is eid not the eid itself but the sighting of the moon nobody has got ikhtilaf when it comes to eid everybody wants to celebrate eid but let us focus on the tariqa to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam when sighting the moon it was simple understandable and that is he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi fa in gumma alaykum faqdiru lahu 30 aw kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of those hadith that you fast when you sight the moon the crescent and when you when you sight it again then you break your fast and if you are not able to see it then complete it 30 be it 30 of Shaban or 30 of Ramadan. This is the criterion. Now, to sight the moon, you are allowed to seek all forms of help, technologies, enable to see it with your eyes. This is what we are allowed to do definitely, including scientific measurements. Scientific, whatever it comes to, whatever they have said, if it is helping you, there is no problem to that. Now, Coming to the core of the issue here in New Zealand, part of the rules which Fiance has been doing, Alhamdulillah, and I have been and still is a member of that, that we sight the moon in New Zealand and also is dependent on Fiji if it is sighted and verified Islamically. Right? Which we did last Sunday. Newsletter from Fiance went all the way <coughs> days before that this is the day we have to sight the moon. It did not say that it is unsightable, don't sight it. People with hundreds of hours of effort and money, they went all over to sight for that moon. Was it just for no purpose? Was it just we were throwing everybody out of the masjid to go inside the moon, the unsightable? Was that the purpose? But that is what the letter seems to be, isn't it? Which came after. This is not right. It, if the moon is there to be sighted, if you have been telling everybody to sight, when it is sighted, why you don't want to take it? This is the question. Isn't it? So now, this was it, and everybody sighted, and I followed it up before, way before Salatul Asr, with the coordinator the, of the Ulma board, to, to take care of it. I also mentioned Brisbane, Melbourne, and Sydney, and he said, the, we should take it. I said, okay, if it is sighted there, I'm going to tell it to you. Okay, fine. Now we started to hear after khutbah, after Tarawih, around from 9.30, that it has been sighted in Fiji. In the beginning, we had two people. Then it came up to seven, not only from one place, from, but from more than one place. Subhanallah. Now they say, no, the possibility of it being sighted is very low. So we are not going to take it. Who says that? Wallahi, in these past four days, I've been following the, week because, uh, following the weather because I have to go out and eat somewhere. Yeah? I see that every time it is saying <coughs> it is going to rain, 40%, 60%, 90%, it is raining. And I can't see rain anywhere. I'm trying to look for it and it is nowhere. This is science. This is science. Now what about something which has been calculated for one year that on this day it is citable in this place and not citable on that? Cannot it, it be proven wrong? 
Indeed it can be. When we have got those brothers who said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and they have been certified by the ulama of the region, what right me and you have to say, no, we are not going to take it. Because they say it was not possible. So why did you send everyone everywhere and why did you call me, including myself? Have, has the moon been cited? For what purpose was it called? I was called. To waste my time? That is wrong. That is wrong. So the moon was cited and then, till, until everybody they agreed in Fiji and it was announced around 11 o'clock. Before that I kept on pursuing it with the rest we, and with the coordinator to please that look, this is the criteria and it is established that it has been cited. We have got no rights to refuse it. No sight. If the moon is not there, then fine. But the moon was there. It, wa it is possible. And then even the so many uh, websites, they say it was uh, possible to be cited in Polynesia. Fiji is almost part of that. And then we see all of these seven brothers, they, they lied. It's not possible. Especially when verified from the ulama of that region that it was cited and that's it. So only when they said no, all these scholars, they say that no, we are not going to take it. That is when Masjid Taqwa decided that it is wrong with the rest of these scholars also educated that this is wrong. How can I tell a person to fast on the Eid today, when it is established and cited. Remember, it is not two hours after in Australia. Forget about that. It is a region which has always been part and parcel of our sighting for every year. Three times a year. For Eid for Ramadan, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Then we had no choice but to announce. I said, if you do not announce, we are going to announce. They said, fine. You can do it. He didn't say you can do it, but do it. And never ever they indicated they are still pursuing the issue, which means it was finished for them, they end in Taha. And only then we saw the most accurate thing to do is announce it. It is Amana ala unokina. Unsur akhaka Support your brother if he's on the wrong or doing the wrong. Hajruhu o manuhu to stop him, to restrain him from committing something which is wrong. So we had no choice but to announce it in the way which most and the best suited the general public. And the natija of that was, they were forced to retract their statement and announce it. Though they are spreading other things now, wrongly, whatever they are doing, that's different. But the thing is they had to retract back and come to what is the truth. So this is what happened, brothers. Now you know what it is. I did not want you people to be committing sins by spreading what is wrong. And it only is my duty to let you people know what is the truth. As he said, Allah would do sometimes over the <coughs> on the khutbah by letting people know what is happening. And now this sighting of the moon and celebration of the Eid is for each and everyone. And that is why we needed to know what had happened. Now, unity is important. But not over Aqidah and not over Sunnah. You can't ride over Quran and Sunnah and say unity is uh, important. Otherwise we all will be, will be Christians here. Because the importance of the unity, 99% are Christians. Nobody says that. Now let us come back to within Islam. If somebody says four times Salah only, no unity. Exactly like that when Rasulullah said, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi. Now, thabat, it has been... Uh, established beyond doubt that it has been cited. How can you tell your people to fast? One of the reasons being said is four years ago it was cited here and Fiji did not take it. So is it that we need to draw one goal for one goal, one half one team scores, the other the other? What kind of excuse is that? And then they say it is going to create confusion. Conf confusion for what? People are sleeping. They announced one o'clock and still everybody was in Salah. <coughs> confusion was created by not announcing it and by adhering to a stubborn view and not taking in consideration what was well established fact. So next time when this kind of things happens, I pray to Allah it never happens. I just wanted you to know the position of Masjid Taqwa, Waqf Taqwa when it came to the decision which was made a scholarly 
academic decision after istikhara and dua and it was not wrong and is never going to be inshallah because, because it has proven to be right and we pray to Allah that the best be what we get وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاقِ إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد أنا عشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أحب العمال إلى الله أدومها وإن قد وكانت هي رضي الله تعالى عنها إذا فعلت شيئا الذي مته In this hadith <coughs> رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says that the best of the deeds in the eyes of Allah is what you are continuously doing. It, the continuity of any good thing which you have started. And Aisha, she, radiallahu ta'ala anha, who narrated this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to love whatever she would start of good to continue with it forever. Keeping that in mind, and keeping the other hadith in which sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا كَانَ إِذَا سَافَرَ أَحَدُكُمْ أَوْ كَانَ مَرِيدًا أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَكَانَ لَهُ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ مَا يَعْمَلُهُ وَهُوَ سُحِيهُ الْمُقِيمُ يُؤْجَرْ عَلِيهِ That a person who, while he is traveling, is a safar ahdukum or marid. When you travel or you are sick. لَهُ مِنَ الْأَجْرِ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلُهُ وَهُوَ سُحِيهُ الْمُقِيمُ He will get the rewards of whatever he used to do of good while he was healthy and a resident, meaning not traveling. When you travel, there are so many things which you can't do. While you are sick, there are indeed so many things physically just not up to the level you would be to do it. You will be getting the rewards of that. Now, keeping that in mind, if you pray 12 rakah, uh, all the sunnah mutawatira, while traveling you do not, you still get the rewards. While you are sick, you do not, did not do qiyamul layl, which you have been doing, you are going to get the rewards of that also, and likewise. Now, the month of Ramadan has gone by. And we have been so excellent in that, mashaAllah, tabarakallah. We had our shortcomings, shortfalls, but each one of us, by the end of the day, when we graduated on the Eid day, we felt that we are more nearer to Allah than ever we may have been. Now, this sense of feeling has to continue. And the only way for it to continue would be if you continue by doing at least one third, one half, whatever amount of what you have been able to do in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, I agree, many sacrifices, time-wise, uh, money-wise, expenses-wise has been done to achieve what you have. And the rest of the 11 months, you are sure you cannot do it because you do have to make a normal living. You do have to spend time with, for other things. Yes, go back to it. I'm not asking that. But we can try to maintain something of that and indeed you would be rewarded. Now, remember, as Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala he said, Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa innahu qad mat, wa man kana ya'budu Allah fa innahu hayyun la yamud. When he sallallahu alayhi wa died, some of the sahabas, they have had conflicting views. They were too shocked to acknowledge that Umar, Abu Bakr, when he walked in, he saw and he said after that, whoever used to worship Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's dead. He's dead. And whoever worships Allah, he is the one who is ever living and not going to die. So indeed like that, man kana ya'budu Ramadan fa innahu qad mat. Intahar. Whoever has been worshipping Ramadan, it's gone. Dead. Khalas. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah fa innahu mawjud. And the one who has been worshipping Allah, Allah is here for us always. So do not think that after Ramadan goes, goes everything is gone. No. You still are here, Allah is waiting for you to come back to Allah. Or if you are still there, then Allah is still receiving you and giving you the best. Including the end part which we can do in the month of Shawwal is man sama Ramadan watba'u sittan min Shawwal kana ka siyam al-dahri kulli the one who fasts um, the month of Ramadan and covers it up with six days in Shawwal now al-hasnatu bi ashri amthaliha each righteous deed you do you get ten times so if you <coughs> fast month of Ramadan that's ten months and then six days that's another two months you get the rewards of the entire year man sama Ramadan walam yaqul man sama ba'du Ramadan which means that you have to fast the entire Ramadan before you can fast the 6th of Shawwal. Which also means that if you still have got some Qadha which you missed from Ramadan for whatever reasons, you have to fast do Qadha before you do Siyam al Shawwal because you would, otherwise you would not fit 
in man sama rongdan summa tabahu min shawal i pray to allah that may allah bless us with the best of this dunya and hereafter may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite among us uniformly in quran and sunnah in the aqidah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam based on uh, the teachings at tariqa uh, of as salaf as salih ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim ajma'in rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaban nar اللهم انصر المجاهدين الذين يجاهدون في سبيلك لعلاء كلمتك يا رحمن يا رحيم اللهم انصرهم عاجلا غير عاجل اللهم انقذ المسجد الاقصى من براثين لهود الغاشمين وارزقنا الصلاة فيه قبل الممات برحمتك يا رحمن يا رحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب